Candy Boo Familia, yeah? and welcome to another day here at Maya Speaks. I am by my beautiful friend, House Wanda. But before we get started, I just want to do a shout out to Chef Ricardo and Go Black to Africa for, you know, being so beautiful and gracious and kind and allowing me to intrude their space, which in that turn has increased my channel and given me new followers and new fans. So I just want to say thank you to everybody that came over from Go Black to Africa from Chef Ricardo's interview and, um, and your new family now. So I just want to give a shout out for that. But nevertheless, moving on, I am here in Tanzania with one of my beautiful dadas of my this Hebrew faith, beautiful sister, knowledgeable in everything, great personality. She is our go-to girl. Her name is Wanda. Wanda, tell me a little bit about yourself. Hi, my name is Wanda Hanford. I am from America. I lived in, I was born in New Jersey, moved to Atlanta, and I was living in Colorado before I moved to the continent of Africa. I have been in Dar es Salaam for almost seven months. It's six months, actually. Um, I got here in July of 2020, so um, I have really enjoyed being on the continent. It's been amazing. Wow, yeah. We always see you on your Facebook just showing out Tanzania this and Tanzania that. I was like, okay, Wanda, I'm coming, I'm coming, I'm coming. She was definitely one of my inspirations to make me come to Tanzania family. So listen, a lot of people, you know, ask me questions and I was like, okay, you know, I can always fill myself out with my family. And I have a lot of sisters that are concerned and they're single sisters. So how, what would you advise would you tell a single sister that's coming here? Um, it is different. The dating scene is a little bit different. Uh, there is a bit of a language barrier, of course, and um, a lot of different um, nuances that you have to work through. But for the most part, Tanzanians are very nice, very calm. Uh, men are very gentlemanlike, open the door. It reminds you of the old-fashioned type. So, um, and there are plenty of men here, plenty of men. There's not a shortage. So that's a good thing. Um, so just learn a little Swahili, um, be open, um, and you will meet the man of your dreams, whether he's from the UK, from the US, from Tanzania, from another continental African country. So sky's the limit when you come back home to the continent. All right. Well, you heard it from Wanda yourself. Okay, so a lot of them are concerned about their safety. That's what I've been hearing. And even when I first came here, I kept thinking, because, you know, we've been indoctrinated in America. Because we think the, the American television shows us every place is unsafe and, like, we're the safest place. But they're concerned. I was concerned, too, but I won't get my feedback. I just want to... What is your thing? How, how has it been for you feeling safe here? Have you seen any violence? Are you afraid when you walk down the street? Are you clutching your purse? You know? Mm -hmm. um, I have not been afraid, but I do. I am cautious because I'm a single woman, of course. Foreigner. I don't speak the language very well. So just have to be um, mindful when you travel at night in Ubers, Bajajis, Bodas. Um, just be mindful at night. If you don't have to really be out at night alone, I would recommend that you not do it if you don't have to. Um, if you live in an area where you're going um, and it's not far in a Bajaj or Uber, I would recommend that you, um, you can, I mean, it would be fine, but just if you're out a little um, in certain rural areas, I wouldn't recommend you travel too much alone at night. So during the day, the sky's the limit. Um, but just that night, unless you have a personal driver, just for safety's sake, I haven't experienced any crime or anything, but I know just as a single woman, even in the America, UK, any place you live, you still have to have the uh, security precautions in terms of like what time you go, when you go. Always be aware of your surroundings um, and your phone. Very important. If you can work on just um, keeping your phone kind of hidden or in your purse uh, just for safety's sake when you're in bajajis or bodas, um, that will be wise so you don't have any issues uh, losing it or someone snatching it. Um, that has not happened to me. Yeah, but me just either. Saying. Right. It's just a, a word of caution and wisdom to be used anywhere, really. Right. But for the most part, I feel completely safe. I haven't had any issues. Matter of fact, I 
had to lose a lot of the indoctrination of what America has portrayed around the world with these other countries. Because one, I know you have seen, as well as I have, that we've seen children as little as three years old walking to school by themselves. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they have, kids are very independent here. Yeah. You have young kids, five-year-olds carrying three-year-old, two-year-old, so uh, they take care of them. Yeah. Um, they do, you know, they, they, they just bathe them, they babysit them, so just, it's a lot of that here. It, they're very loving. The, yeah. uh, Continents of Africans have a, a very loving spirit. They're very kind to one another, so different from what the West tries to portray, it being violence and, and, and uh, poverty. Uh, that's not true. You have poverty everywhere, but they have food that grows on trees, they have oceans, they have fish, so nobody's hungry and starving and nobody's dying of hunger here. So just right. wanted to clear that up. And yeah, we do not, I have yet to see any children walk around with big bellies and flies, right? We don't see that. Like, talking about 20 cents for a cup of coffee, like, like, they know how to make coffee. We don't, you know what I mean? Right. Like, they're very resourceful. Whoa, if anything happens in this world, like they be talking about the EMP or whatever, these people on the continent after our family, they know how to continue on with life. They know how to shelter themselves. They will continue to feed themselves. They will, life will go on for them. They won't panic and break down of hysteria of like a lot of us back home in America would. So that's just one of the benefits of being here too, is you close to people that are close to our roots and they don't mind teaching you. They don't. But like I say, we have babies walking around here, and I observe them, and there's no, there's news channels here. Do we wake up and watch the news where like five or six kids, little babies were snatched off the street for trafficking and all that? Do we, do, do we hear anything like that? None of that. These, is so different here. So I definitely appreciate you touching on that. Um, other than that, your experience, what about, they like concerned about housing, like, what would you say about that? Um, housing is kind of tricky, in my opinion, mm -hmm. um, because of the standard of uh, inspection or the maintenance that we do in, in the West. They don't really do that here. They don't really maintain the houses like that. So they're built, and then they're, and then they, you live in them until something breaks down, and then they get fixed. So um, you have to be mindful of that when you look for a house or an apartment. Um, you may want to stick with newer homes, not so many older ones, because some of the older ones will be very big and, and, and you know, uh, cheap, but you may have a lot of uh, problems, water problems, electricity problems, termites. So I would recommend that you also be here and look for a place, boots on the ground, instead of having someone else look for you, because People don't always check the way we need to check. We need to turn on all the lights, we need to flush all the toilets, run all the sinks, little stuff like that um, that we kind of take for granted. You have right. to check here. Yeah. So I would recommend, I mean, I don't think it's hard to find a nice place and it's based on like your amount of money that you want to pay. So if you want, if you don't have a lot, you may have to move out further to get what you want, a nicer place. Um, but you, you have to weigh your pros and your cons. Because if you live in the most expensive area, which is Masaki, you may pay a little more. But she just are, came from there. Right, I just moved from there. I live in, in Bezzy now, in Bezzy, Bezzy Beach, which is a lot uh, uh, cheaper, more reasonable, yeah. more reasonable, but it's not as convenient. So I have to walk more places. A lot of the Ubers and Bajajis there, it's difficult for them to find me. Power goes out more often here. Um, you have to, you know, internet is not is um, consistent. So you kind of weigh your pros and cons, but you really need to be here to check each area to see what lifestyle you want to live and how much you want to pay. So I would recommend with the housing, you be here, not sending someone ahead to check for you. Sometimes that works out, but sometimes it doesn't. And you don't need people saying, you know, you showed me a place and it wasn't up to standard or to par. So. I would recommend to just come here first, get a hotel or Airbnb, mm -hmm. and then look yourself, just go around, connect with us, there's so many of us here, mm -hmm. and then we'll also tell you, oh, this is a good place, oh, I have a place to rent, because many of us, we have places, we have openings, of right. uh, rooms available, Airbnbs, so just connect with us, and we'll make sure that when you do arrive, that we'll have, we'll have you 
meet the lollies and take you around and look at places. Exactly. Yeah, family, because we are really building on what we call the Black Wall Street Part D2 that we're going to make it happen this time because, you know, we don't have to worry about when we look up in our skies we don't we don't see chemtrails so let alone worry about somebody trying to bomb us while we're trying to build and connect our families because it's really not about us but it's definitely about the next generation that's coming behind us now wanda i want to go back to you said that you have power outages so people are like what do you mean power outages you're like what's that about because you know we're not used to that in america can right. you tell them what happens with that well with power outages uh the power goes out everything not just the lights all of the power so you'll be possibly without power for a couple of hours it could be 24 hours so you just have to make provision you have to learn what 24. you can do uh it could be 24 hours or it could be a i've never been hours. here before right but. so um i have since i've been here so, um, yeah, it's been, it, it could be, you know, eight hours, maybe 24 hours exaggerating, but eight hours, maybe three hours, two hours. So, but whether it's eight hours, two hours, for us from the West, we're not used to being without power. So you just have to learn to um, uh, realize that, uh, figure out what you need to do when the power goes out. So many of us live around uh, internet cafes. If you move out further, you may need to get a generator because then you may not have an internet cafe like we do in Masaki, like we do here in Embezzi. So where I live, I can walk to an internet cafe and it's about maybe seven minutes, seven to 10 minute walk um, to the cafe and I can sit there for hours until the power comes back on. Um, so some houses have generators, but uh, the further out you go, the more you, people will have generators and or you can buy a generator, it's very expensive. But uh, yeah, power outages is a, or lights out is a serious thing on the continent because it can happen at any time. So you just want to have your mind prepared and not panic. Mm -hmm. Just have things in place so where if your power goes out, you'll know what to do. All right. Now the flip side of that, because I can hear so many of you guys out there crying, like, oh yeah, yeah, I'm do with that. Like, she done said enough for me. Like, I ain't got time for all that power. I just, I'm just staying my black but right here where I'm at. No. The flip side to that is you do have another option where you renting or buying your home. Like where I live, I, we have a backup generator. When they have a power outage, I go to the little box and it, and I flip it and the lights come back on. So I, I, that's why I'm there. So I'm like never without power. And I have um, Wi-Fi where I live 24 hours because I need it because I still do work online. And I need it so if the power were to go out, I need to be able to continue to work. So there are options in different places where they have places that have backup generators so that if anything goes, you just flip it and you just continue on about life. So definitely, you, but I've been in Morogoro <laughs> and the power went out. That was my first time. And I was like, okay, so I think I just, maybe God is trying to tell me I need to learn how to suffer a little bit. You know what I'm saying? And then, but, it, but within about an hour or so, it did come back on and I was happy. But nevertheless, that is the reality here in some places, especially when you're trying to budget. It takes a compromise, but you can do it, you know? Now, what about the water? Some people are like, is the water safe there? Mm -hmm. What do you think about the water? Well, uh, most of us drink bottled water. I actually brush my brush my teeth with the sink water. I haven't. I've been here since July 2020, and I haven't gotten sick or anything. So, um, you can use bottled water to brush your teeth, but I just I just don't. Um, it's I wouldn't drink it, but I don't. I, I think if you brush your teeth, you just don't swallow water, spit it out. I think it'll be fine. Um, but if you feel more comfortable, just use bottled water. I mean, because we drink bottled water. Exactly. And if you don't have bottled water, just boil it. Boil. That's what we do. Mm -hmm. I, I've done it before in my place when I just didn't have the water, but I had that water. I just boiled it, put it in the fridge, and kept it moving. You know exactly. what I mean? Exactly. So it's we've become more resourceful being here on the continent of Africa. Stuff that we didn't have to do in America due to the conveniences, we don't always have that here. And we're starting to be more resourceful the longer we're here, just like the continental Africans. If they don't have something, they don't roll over and die, they figure things out. And the same thing with us, we're learning how yes. to manage. Like we may be at home and the power may go out, the phone may die, but you know, you just become resourceful. You may have numbers in your phone call. You think of things outside of the box that you probably wouldn't have to think of in right. the West. 
you learn to be more resourceful. Right. I definitely invested in one of these. I used to have them back home, but I just took them for granted because, you know, hey, but I had it, you know. But here, I definitely keep this charged up. And I keep my computer charged up because sometimes I go and I be in other people's places that they have power outages and I'm able to still charge up my phone and I'm able to still continue on with my journey. But, you know, these are just some things that, you know, you have to look at and we don't want to make it seem like it's all um, peaches and cream. But nevertheless, you can get through it because it is more beautiful being here than over there. It's still better than America. That's what, that's what a lot of us say. We have a sister in the truth, and she says it all the time. It's still better than America here. We're living the African dream at the end of the day. I know, and it is so beautiful here. It's beautiful, say. it's amazing. It's paradise, in my opinion. It is, I mean. <laughs> it's hot, but it's paradise. <laughs> it is gorgeous. Like, you know, wherever we, over there in these other countries, whether you be from the UK, Canada, kind of, they're all kind of on this same thing, where if they see a tree, they pull it up and put an apartment. Here, they value more with the the, the, um, the plushness of the land. You get to see, you, you, you drive by b banana trees, pineapples, like, like how we have fast food restaurants. They have fast food uh, fruits. Like That's why you're gonna get healthy here. You, 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 you find yourself walking a lot. You're getting the, um, the vitamin D from the sun. Your pineal gland is healing and what have you. But you're not getting all these McDonald's and you're, you go through a detox first. At least that's what happened to me when you first came. Did you go through like a health detox? Um, I, I can't tell physically in, um, in terms of my system, but I know I changed the way I eat. And I know I can, I can feel the difference in my skin because people, many people online would say, you're glowing. And then I look, I didn't realize it, but I look back at my pictures from the West before I got here and I just look so pale and so drab and just so unhappy. But here the African sun gives us life. And her skin looks so vibrant. So, exactly. yeah, and I, she I is beautiful. I'm telling so you. So are you. <laughs> so, see. We're the African queen. Yes, y'all back gotta, at home. Y'all gotta come back home. You gotta come on back <laughs> home. Listen. So yeah. So nevertheless, with that being said, what about people say, okay, I want to come, but like I don't have a lot of money. Like, do I have to have ten thousand dollars, a hundred thousand dollars? Cause y'all might have to be rich or whatever. But I ain't got no money. Like. What do you? What would you say to them? Like, how much would you say it takes to just maybe board a plane, get here, and how to in the rent and tell them how the rent works or right. whatever? The most the most expensive um, uh, the most the most expensive uh, amount that you're gonna pay, or the mo the priciest thing you're gonna pay for the ticket. So that's the most important, uh, most expensive thing is buying the ticket to come. Um, but uh, rent could be a bit, uh, it, it depends on your budget. So if you don't have a lot saved, I, I would not not come because of that because um, just if you can have, if you have a plan of some type of income, whether it's online, whether it's in, in, you know business investments online, anything online is really good. But even if you do come here and you don't have a whole lot, just have a plan of an idea of a business that you want to set up here or do going into business, uh, partnering with Tanzanians. But just have an idea. You don't have to be rich because um, there are many of us here um, that are not rich. We, we came over here on savings. We came over here on a prayer. We're believing and trusting the creator that he will provide for us and he has been. I'm not rich. I'm just a middle class working person just like everyone else. Um, I did resign from my job since I've been here. Um, so I did have some savings, so that's basically what I live off of. But I do have little gigs here and there, little ways of having uh, income coming in here and there. So just have to have a plan, an idea. But the most expensive thing would be the a flight, a plane ticket. Now, when you come here in terms of renting, you uh, most of the people require at least three to six months worth of rent. So just be prepared. Um, um, if they want six, it's hard to get them down to three months. So um, just, you know, you can negotiate. Everything's negotiable, but yeah. with us, with the rent terms, it's usually three to six months they want ahead of time. Now, if you come here and you know someone here and you are, you can, maybe you can stay with someone, one of the diaspora that are here, that's a lot of us that we have homes and apartments with extra rooms like Airbnbs or whatever, you can make some kind of arrangements with someone that you connect with. Um, through Maya, 
Um, <laughs> so you can make some kind of connections because we know a lot of people here over thousands of us here by now. I just I know it when I first got here in July 2020, uh, it wasn't as many, but now it's a lot. So you can connect and we can work things out. We just have to con communicate with us to see what, what your budget is. And we'll try to help you out as much as we can. Exactly. Connecting you with, with be, um, Delali's or people who have places. I mean, because we don't want anybody not to be able to come here, especially when they're trying to escape Babylon. So we would want to be here for you to help you in any way that we can. Exactly. With advice or with rooms or Airbnbs or connections or referrals or whatever. Exactly. I, I definitely concur um, with my sister on that. Matter of fact, just a shout out, I do have one bedroom open. So if anybody's coming and they need a bedroom place to stay, just email me at mayaspeakstz at gmail.com. Okay, so is there anything else you would like to offer the community? Um, Nothing, but uh, well, I do want to also say that um, when you come, if you decide to come back to the mama land, make sure that you have the right attitude because um, we re we're representing one another here, uh, the diaspora, because we're coming from the UK, Jamaica, from all over um, the four corners of the world, the earth, so we want to make sure that you have a positive um, attitude um, in dealing when you come here. Things are a little bit different. The pace is a lot slower, so uh, we tend to, uh, you know, uh, get a little short, short, short tempered or short patient. Uh, patient. Yeah, we mm -hmm. become impatient. So please work on that before you arrive, so you would be patient and calm. Because Tanzanians, they move at their own pace. They don't move fast because you want them to. So we want to make sure we have the right attitude and that we have the right disposition. And even when we encounter situations that are not pleasant, which some of us do, which many of us do with overcharging or whatever the case might be, um, sometimes it's the way that we handle it that makes a difference and that they remember us. So if we handle it in a professional manner, calm, and you know, still stern and you get, you get, you get that uh, issue dealt with then it makes a, a world of difference in how the Tanzanians see us. So you want to be accepted, you want to assimilate, but you want to be respectful at the same time. So just keep that in your mind when you do come. It's not instant, it's not as convenient as what we're used to, but just remember what it we're It is doable. For. It's doable, right. Right. And another thing too, if you get with you a good Tanzanian that's going to take you out shopping so that you don't get taken advantage of, if they tell you to be quiet, be quiet. Because as soon as we talk, our accent gives us away. And if they're trying to negotiate for you, it makes it that much harder for them. Because then they know when we speak, you then there's going to be times where they want to overcharge you. So that's why we get us a nice Tanzanian friend that goes and bargains with us until we catch on. Like right now, I, I'm kind of more hip than when I first started. So I don't really have to have, but I go into Carico. I wouldn't go there alone. I have, <laughs> I'm not ready there for that. There are some places that I, I've been here for almost seven months, I mean six months, and there are still some places I would not I would not go without a Tanzanian because with some of the business offices, they don't always speak English. Some none of them in there speak English. So we can't manage as Americans like we normally do in other countries here. Uh, Swahili speak without speaking Swahili, it's gonna be very, very difficult to handle a lot of business uh, without being able to speak Swahili. So you're gonna have to get to know a Tanzanian. And, and, and trust the Tanzanian and then you know like Maya was saying you know sometimes the accent will, will get us more higher charges and unfortunately it is what it is so, so you'll learn when you learn a little bit Swahili you learn to speak it slowly talk slower and then just sometimes you just have to be quiet I know it's hard and difficult because we're not used to that in the West we're used to speaking our mind we're used to speaking up when we you know whenever but this is a different country and then, you know, there's a male, you know, dominated society, patriarchal society. So we have to keep that in mind and how we handle things and how we speak sometimes. So sometimes one word will get you, uh, you know, you could get a Tanzanian price. And then because you speak and say one word in English, your price is going to change. Yeah, that happened to me when I went to Moshi. <laughs> my so friend, so, my friend told me, just be quiet and let me go talk to people. And then I was just so ready to video. I'm like, y'all ready? <laughs> say we need her passport. And I was like, okay. Mm -hmm. But nevertheless, she is so, you know, dead on with that. Mm -hmm. um, what was the other thing I was thinking of was saying? Um, 
It ain't no, if you don't like something, you're sending it back. Like, oh, you yeah. know, listen, they'll take it back, but you're going to pay for that and the next thing you got, so. Yes, the, the, I have learned since I've been here, if you order something, because there's a language barrier, if you order something, just, just eat it. <laughs> <laughs> because they're not going to take it back because they don't waste money and they don't they don't waste food here so if you order chicken and you get fish just eat it they don't do substitutions like we're using yeah food. can you substitute the greens for the beans and can i get this they don't substitute so just buy the whole meal and if you want a side if you want something additional just order additional but don't you can't do a substitution because they don't understand that they don't do substitutions you have to buy the whole meal everything that comes with it and in addition to your side so keep that in mind it's very important because we're used to in the west substituting and we're used to if we don't like something and it doesn't taste we send it back that's not here it's right. not right there here and also i found out when you negotiate with them for whatever reason we're just so lax in america we just don't follow through with everything until it gets the deal gets on the table don't do that because the way they do business, they try and get you something. They, well, I ain't gonna say they're gonna try and get you stuff. It's just different cultures. What it is, if they're gonna do something, they say, Yeah, I can do it, and they go and do it. And if you didn't discuss the price first when they come back to you and tell you, it's, it's, it's hard for you to say, Well, I don't wanna do that. And then the negotiation becomes that much harder. So it, I behoove you. They're beautiful people and whatever, but the culture, our cultures are totally, totally different. different. If you want them to do something, they say they can do it, you stop them and say, hey, wait a minute, how much? Shilingapi. Shilingapi? Yes. <laughs> what she how said. Much? <laughs> exactly, because it could create such a breakdown, and you don't want that because they are serious about their money, and you don't want anybody saying you're over here bagging them, and then they, they, they go and report immigration for... Whatever. The point is, I just want you, that's a powerful lesson to learn because you get frustrated. You're like, well, I didn't agree. I didn't think that from whatever. It doesn't matter. Ask them up front. Should it not be? Right. <laughs> <laughs> and then you'll be much happier afterwards with the outcome. Trust me when I tell you that. Okay, Wanda, what about the American dollar? I can't speak for the yen or what the pound, but one U.S. dollar, how much is that? And T T shilling. So one U.S. dollar is esti it's an estimated two thousand three hundred and nineteen um, T shillings. I had twenty three ten. Did this the stock go up? <laughs> yeah, since we got here, it, it, it varies. Right, so it's exactly. Up and down, but the, it's an estimate. And it's an app we can download too. Yeah, and the, then you can actually do the currency converter, Google currency converter. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So that you know. You'll know, right? So for each dollar, it's, a, it's an estimated 2310 or 2319, 2319 T shillings. So 10,000 T shillings is kind of like the going rate here. That's $4.36. So, right. So don't get over <laughs> here because sometimes, you know, when we see their money, my mind still hasn't converted over it. And I'd be like, $60,000? I ain't paying no sixty thousand dollars, but then when you convert, it's like my friends will tell me, "My, that's three dollars." <laughs> I'd be like, "What?" Yes, you have to because you got you can't think in the USD. You have to think in T shillings. Right. So you just have to it practice. You have to take practice to do that. Yeah. When I had to go pay my three months of rent, I felt like a drug dealer. I'm like, how did money? Poor boy. Yeah, I had a briefcase. I was looking around. You know, what I mean, I don't want to get robbed. Whatever. But you know, that's part of the culture here too, is the, um, the, the money currency here. It's totally different. Mm -hmm. um, and the language. So those are two things that when you come, I would recommend that you download those apps. That's right. The, uh, t the currency converter and the, um, the translate apps. You could translate from uh, US, from English to Swahili. If you don't know it, I had that and I still use it from English to Swahili, Swahili back. So if you're by yourself, because we may not always be with a Tanzanian. Right. So if you have to go somewhere by yourself and you can't get a Tanzanian, you can still communicate for food. I want, you can just type in English, I would like fish, rice, and it'll convert it. And then you just let them read it. So right, I do that a lot. So, so that's very that. helpful. So that, that'll help out a lot. Exactly. Like, and then you have some people say, well, I don't, I, I only got my, you know, Wells Fargo card, SunTrust, or whatever. Like, when I get it, I don't even know about a T shirt and what would I. So, you would tell them to, to download, like, maybe World Mint. Yeah, but yeah, if you want to, um, like, use, uh, you want to sync money from your US bank account to here, they have a Tico Pesa 
system where you can pay everything through like one system and I really like it. I'm Me too. USA. Yeah. Me I too. Was, when I say that they're supposed to be yeah, so, we don't carry around they're supposed money. to be so um, uh, technologically, technologically, advanced. Technology, technologically advanced, but they have Tico Pesa and that's mm. awesome because it's like you can, uh, it's like a, um, it's Western like cash app, but it's missing another big component that cash app don't yeah. have. It's okay. like you Western moon your, your money from your bank account, your US bank account into their Tico Pesa account. You can pay all your bills with their Tico Pesa Everything. account. Everything. The Uber, the everything, everything, even personal people. So if you yeah. want to go and buy a dress or some shoes, all you need is the person's number because everything is connected through their uh, payment system, through your phone, your SIM card number. So everybody has a SIM card number and that's how you pay your bills. It's very convenient. I love it. We'll all help you when you get here. Uh, you know, you, you still have your U.S. account. Uh, you can open an international account here, but that's a whole nother a whole nother uh, interview, right? Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, you can, because I did. Mm -hmm. And I, I opened one without money. Mm -hmm. And then I was going to Morogoro, and I was kind of rushing. I'm like, I don't know what I'm going to do. I'm running out of time. She's like, we got one in um, Morogoro. Just when you go there, just tell them this or whatever. And I was like, I opened an account. I didn't give you any money. And I, you know, and then they sent me my card later. And then when I got ready, I deposited money into my Tanzania bank account, so it's just that much easier. So you would download an app called Rural Remit. Mm -hmm. Rural Remit is like the middleman. Rural Remit connects to your U.S. bank account, and then Rural Remit connects to the Pesa and Pesa and all the Pesa's account. Mm -hmm. So if you get short and you say, "Listen, I need a hundred dollars," it'll grab your American U.S. hundred dollars. And then it'll dump it over here, and then it turns into T shillings in your and pay account. Converts, yeah. converts. It converts, yeah. Converts. So, you. like, if you're in a car, you need an Uber. Matter of fact, do they have Lyft here? Um, I think Bolt. Right. It's like that's Bolt. what I'm trying to. Mm -hmm. do, I, mean, I haven't seen Lyft. Uber is here, uh, but I haven't seen them. But the other one is called Bolt. Mm -hmm. They yeah. said Bolt used to be Lyft. Oh, but wow. I don't know how true that is because I don't know if it's, it's converted in the U.S. But they say here Bolt was a lift, they switched it from lift to bolt. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you do have the option of Uber as well as Bolt. Mm -hmm. A lot of people choose Uber because Uber does more of a background, but Bolt doesn't do as much, but Bolt is cheaper. Mm -hmm. I've used Bolt, but you know, I definitely haven't had a problem with either. But you definitely have to be careful that when they do come and pick you up, that a lot of times, sometimes the, the cars won't match. Mm -hmm. And you, you know, then you're gonna have to make your own judgment decision and say if you want to go or you want to cancel and wait. But and then also, what happens. I do is when the when the uh, tags don't match, I'll say I'll ask the driver who are you picking up, and then they'll have your name. So they'll say I'm picking up Wanda. Right. So that's kind of a good uh, indicator. Security. Yeah, mm -hmm. indicator. You can also put a passcode on your Uber app. I have one to where when they pick you up, they'll ask for a code. And mm -hmm. then you give them a four-digit code. They won't know where you're going until after you give them the code. So they won't see in advance, oh, she's going to. Mm -hmm. For security purposes, I think that's good for women. If you buy yourself at night, you don't always want people to know where you're going at night. So when they get there, you put the passcode in, then they see where you're going. So that's kind of like a little security precaution and help the women, you know, security. Most men don't use it, but it's good for women. It is. And another thing, too, if you're a single woman, come over here, try and group up with another woman yeah. first. Don't try and come here and live on your own. It's always good to go through that camaraderie that you all can kind of watch each other's back. You can learn together. You're not in the house alone. It just makes it so much better to you do your maybe your three months, and then after that, you may be ready to venture out on your own. But back to raining, let me just hit that up. A lot of places you can find. I've had a friend that I was in with Sarai. We've been out shopping. She got a, a nice place for $250 a month, some $300 a month. And then, like I should say, some of them, some landlords you can negotiate and go from month to month. You just have to keep, it's not very common, but it does happen. Mm -hmm. And like if you get rent that's for $250 a month, they usually gonna want three months in advance. So it's like 250 times three. Mm -hmm. Then you might have a place that you really like and they might require six months. Mm -hmm. But still, there's always room here for negotiation. Yeah, you can always try. Um, it's kind of hard for us to negotiate, truly negotiate thoroughly, in my opinion, because a lot of the owners don't speak English. So you have that translator. Mm -hmm. So it is kind of difficult, but if you have a good Tanzanian person that's helping you, they usually can try to get try find to find that, that wiggle room. room right that wiggle room because if one area doesn't work for you or one house 
is always, they have a lot. That's another thing is they, have, they do have a lot to pick from. It's just that your budget and what you, what locations so and your location and your budget. Um, like, you know, uh, where I am now, um, which is really like, nice. I love thank it. You. it. I pay. I only paid three forty four a month, and I thought that was pretty good for and, this place. And it's how many bedrooms? Yeah, it's two bedrooms, um, and it's pretty modern compared to some of the other places that I have. It's really in. nice. I did have to furnish it, so you know you just do. You to, don't get overwhelmed by that. You can just do like one piece at a time. It's just you like for me. I can, the main thing I really need is a bed. So that would probably be the first thing I would get, even if I didn't have anything else. You just get, one, based on your income and what you have, you get one thing at a time. You don't have to fill the whole place up at one time, but you work at your own pace. It doesn't matter what everybody else is doing. The goal is to try to stay on a budget and try to get what you need that's convenient. Sometimes you may have to start off washing your clothes in a pail or get a Dada. Mm -hmm. Pay a Dada to wash your clothes. Or What's a Dada? A Dada is a sister that cleans your house. Like, so you may have to get like a house help to wash your clothes. Cause they, wa I would say that because they wash really well. They know, really know how to wash your clothes. They wash your clothes like a washing machine. Wash yeah, better. Clothes. So they, they have it and they do it just like a washing machine. And then when you, and they hang them when, you, when your clothes, I mean, they clean, they fresh. So they, they are really good. So it's worth you paying them until you get a washing machine. And how much do they usually so, run? It, it, it varies. It depends on like how many days you have them. So some people may pay them like ten or 15000 a day. Or if you have them, you know, for a week, you can figure out how much that's going to be. Exactly. So it, it, it depends on what your budget is. And then when you talk to them, what they're willing to Because you guys negotiate that as well. Exactly. And, and so, 40000 a day is how much in USD? Um, that's a lot. $40, no. 40000 a day. No. A no, no. I'm just showing oh, how, 40, how you, 40, you, how you can think that 40000 yeah, so a lot. Right. So that's <laughs> like 10000 is 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 uh, 10000 t shirts like $4. For, so what, like 40000 And that's 16 Sixteen, seventeen dollars, seventeen dollars a day. Well, no, 000. look, no, twenty, almost twenty thousand is one dollar, and twenty thousand two times it's only like two dollars. Mm -mm. Think, because ten thousand t shirts is four dollars. Okay, wait a minute. I thought you said, we said no. I'm thinking about two thousand. Yeah, 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 I don't yeah. make this. I don't made it twenty three. Yeah, yeah, out of twenty thousand. Yeah, okay, okay, okay. Twenty right. thousand is a lot. Right. This is so not, not mine. Yes, <laughs> per day. I would say no more. Than, yeah. If, especially if they're going to be here more than one day. If it, they're just going to be washing your clothes for one day, right? At least thirteen or fifteen thousand to wash your clothes for that day. But if they're going to be here like three days a week or two, at least ten thousand dollars a day. Exactly. I mean, because that's what you pay at Uber: ten thousand t shillings um, an hour. So that's what you pay Uber. Not saying you have to pay the dot dot that, but just you know, kind of be. Yeah, it balances out yeah, to make it righteous, because you yeah, because they they are so the dot dots. And that's what we call them, the Dada's. The Dada's. They mm -hmm. have such beautiful spirits, very humble. And they work you know, hard. Very hard. They work hard. You may have to, some of them are young, so you may have to tell them some stuff. Because we do a little, we, we clean a little bit differently from what they, how they clean, from in my opinion. Uh, I think we use more, we use more chemicals than they do. Like we use Clorox bleach and all that. They don't really, they're not big on too many chemicals. They do more natural. So sometimes you may have to say, can you use this bleach too? Mm -hmm. Or can you use this pine saw? Because mm -hmm. I noticed they use cleaner, but they don't use the bleach, the heart, the stuff that kills the germs. In my opinion, I've noticed a lot of them, just, they just clean with the basic cleaner, which is, it's, it's healthier actually. Mm -hmm. It really but is. we're so used to in the West, like I'm used to bleach mm -hmm. and I'm used to like pine saw. So I like my stuff to, to, to know that I'm killing germs. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's just a little bit different. But if you watch them and you can just, I mean, they're open. You can buy the stuff yourself and say, here. Because exactly. most of the time when they go clean your house, you got to buy the stuff anyway. So you just buy what you want them to use. You're right. There you go. Exactly. So that's kind of the like easy part. <laughs> exactly. Now, I had one young lady that just came from the States, and she'd been looking for a bathtub. And I'm like, get over it. You know what I mean? So you, you tell them, like, come in. Like, there's some things you're going to have to let go. You can get it, but it's just going to cost you. Over here, they really don't see much need for a bathtub. So you very rarely... I'm just warning you, wherever you go, when you get to your bathroom, you, you probably just won't see a bathtub. And a toilet. Some places... You have the traditional toilet. Mm -hmm. What's a traditional and that's toilet? that's um, <laughs> the squatter 
toilet to where you kind of squat and use it. Like you don't have nothing to rest on, you just squat. And just like if you go outside and you go in the bushes and you squat, it's a squatter toilet. It, you know, it kind of reminds me of like, uh, you know how men use the urinal, the stand-up urinal? It kind of reminds me like one of those, but it's on the floor. So it's like laid on the floor and you just kind of squat over, you stand over, you squat and you use it. So, and it has a butt, it has a spigot. Yeah. So it's not like you do that and you're looking around looking crazy. Everything has a little, like a little spigot, which is like a little water hose. Mm -hmm. It's it, like a, a, a bidet. It's a bidet. So you just spray. That's one thing that most of these, most of the houses that have here are bidets, which is nice. I really yeah. like those. I like them better. Because you can, right. You can, you can, I you feel don't real have to wipe, 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 wipe. You can spray. It's like you showering. You basically exactly. showering. I feel time. much fresher than I did yes. back in the sound. I'm like, you know what? Much fresher. We're fresher. Oh, they're fresher over here than we are over here. Yes, they are. They do keep. They keep their their private areas really clean because they use that sprayer. It's like bathing every day. Every every time you use the restroom, and so it's nice. That's one thing I really like about. I it's love. Nice. It's not say like. And I both of my restrooms have them, and I'm like. Shh. I, I love them. All right, we're gonna keep on talking about that. But y'all yeah, will experience if we get here. Mm -hmm. All right, we got some more questions going on. Right, what would you tell them to do with their cell phone before they leave the U.S. coming here? What I would recommend is you um, make sure it's unlocked. Key. Because when you get here, you're gonna have to get a SIM card, or you can get the phone with the two SIM card slots. So you can have the U.S. SIM card. You're going to keep your U.S. phone. Some people, if they don't get the U.S. phone, then you just buy another phone. But if you want to keep the U.S. Yeah, I SIM had to buy another that. phone because yeah. they said I, my phone wasn't unlocked. So now I'm dealing with two phones. <laughs> right. So some people do that, too. They either don't want to keep the U.S. number or they have an issue on getting the phone unlocked while they're here. Um, so if you can do it before you leave, that would be best. I didn't get mine unlocked. I had to get mine unlocked while I was here. And thank goodness I called T-Mobile and I was able to get it in a couple of days. It took about a week, so they had to send me this thing. And in 24 hours, I had to unlock it and put the SIM card in. So it was kind of inconvenient. So I would recommend you try to do that before you leave home in yeah. America. That would be best just to keep down the headaches or get the phone that holds two SIM cards. So yeah, yeah, because that's what happened with me, mm -hmm. which allowed me to keep my U.S. number. I still have my U.S. number, and I have a Tanzanian number because I still got business in the U.S. So you can, if there's a question saying, can I keep my my U.S. number? Yes, you can. Yes, you can. Now, I don't know. I can't speak for the U.K. I can't speak for Canada, Jamaica. All we're here is speaking for U.S. U.S. right now. Mm -hmm. But we do know, don't you got that Sims card? Mm -hmm they can make it happen, right? Right, because I have, I kept my U.S. number too and I have a Tanzanian number. I have a son that lives in America and I need to be in touch with him. So I pay our bill. So I keep the, um, the U.S. number and then I have the Tanzanian number. Exactly. Now would you ask them to create a Google number as well? Um, I'm not really familiar with the Google number, but I heard it is yeah. helpful. I heard it's very helpful in handling business, especially if you're going to get rid of your um, U.S. Number. SIM card or your U.S. account, but, uh, phone. Uh, you will get rid of your U.S. phone altogether. Just oh, just do the Google. Right, I did that. They told me that to do that, and, it, and also it's very imperative if you want to continue business, get you a VPN number while you're in the states. Because mm -hmm. trying to get it from over here is not going to work. And if you're doing online work and your company maybe want to make sure you stand in a geographical area, the VPN number will continue to help you make a smooth transition with your company. But if you don't have that VPN number, trying to get it from over here creates a barrier. Get it done before you leave yeah, the state. Yeah, if you, if you, like I got mine over here. So, um, but the thing is, I didn't work online. Right. So it, it I it, had time. Right. So I wasn't, wasn't pushed to urgency, urgently get it. And I got it whenever it, and it when I got it, it is set up fine. But yeah, if you could do that, that's, those are just little headaches that you can try to avoid when you come here. Those things, if you could do those right before you come, um, that would be, yeah, that would be better. Exactly. Now, they told me I need to get $100 for my visa. Mm -hmm. Would you suggest that? Yeah, when a you... $100 bill in crispy. Because not 24, 60, 80 and a couple of wrinkled ones or whatever. You should have at least a $100 crispy $100 bill. Yeah, well. That's what was right, told to me. And yeah. I went through with no problem. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And also, they said that have your, if you get in, bring a USD money here, I don't know if you heard the same thing, they say have it so it's 10 years 
old or less. Mm -hmm. I heard that, but when I came, I did come back in July of 2020 and I didn't have somebody giving me advice. Mm -hmm. So I actually used my credit card to pay for my visa. Okay, so they that's good. Visa. They let me use my visa card. I don't even know if they do that still. But that, because that was July of 2020. I just used my, my uh, US our visa. Right. And they let me pay for it, and I just had uh, fifty dollars USD, and I converted at the airport to t shirts Okay, so that's another option too, family. We're just giving you what they yeah. gave us, and mm -hmm. whatever works for you, let it work. I just know but that. Definitely, if you go bring cash, the newer, I would recommend yeah. you try to make look at the year just to make sure it's newer, or like she said, just to keep down because when you're going through immigration, it's stressful as it is, mm -hmm. and you want to try to make your process as seamless as possible. You don't want any hiccups or any issues. So you can just try to stick with some of the advice that people have given you to come over here seamlessly. I would say stick with that. Right. Also, they say you should start your quest kiss Swahili lessons ahead for greetings and numbers. Would you suggest that? Well, I didn't do it because I just jumped out there. But I would say yes, yes. Right. because it um, helps. It helps to have an idea of at least how to say hello, and goodbye, just the basic food. Yeah. You know, some a stuff. Thank I you. Wish, a thank Santisana. You. Right. Just basic stuff. Uh, you had to start at least the greetings, even if not food. But food was like, I, I would say for me, food was like high on the list because as soon as I arrived, food is high on the list. I was hungry. Oh, wait, wait. Right. As soon as we went on that flight for all those hours and those two flights for all those hours, when you get here, a lot of times you're tired and hungry. Yeah. So, chakula. Is food chakula? That's all, all you have to do is say that one word, and then, then the Uber driver. Most of them, if you connect them with us, will connect you with one that speaks English. But yeah, if you say don't, that. if you say that, they know all oh, food, so they'll take you around and show you the food. So just the greetings, like Maya said, and food, um, you know, food and water. Uh, you can say water, most people know what that yeah, is. Well, maji, yeah, maji. Maji, right. uh, which is, is water, but water, but chakula. If they don't know what food is. And that's another thing over here too. If you guys are over here in America like I was like, I don't care for water that much over here, you it becomes precious yeah. gold. You gotta have that water out of because you know we're not drinking like all those sodas now. Yeah, like we're not. we pray water mm -hmm. more than anything. We and keep water now. Water is the cheapest thing. That's yeah. another thing is here the junk it's it's weird, it's opposite of the West. The junk food costs more here. And the healthy food costs less. Yeah, yeah. So in the West, the, the the healthy food costs more, and the junk food costs less. So that's why we eat more junk over there. But here, the sodas and all that pop and all yeah. that coke, you it's very expensive. It. Yeah, you can get water for and a thousand yeah. shillings or something, and squeeze your lemon in if you want to. Right. Keep it so water is is family. family. So prayerfully that won't happen. Yeah, you're gonna drink a lot of water being here because it's hot. So you're gonna need that water and it's it is, it's cheapest to get. Exactly. Now also, I have here, they say you should reserve your accommodations ahead, verification of place book. That is true. Because when you're going through immigration, they will ask you that. So please have all of that information ready to go so that when you're going through, it'll make it that much easier. You agree? Mm -hmm. I agree with that. Unless at least have an idea. Um, where you're gonna stay or who you're gonna stay with. So if you know someone here, it's kind of good to have their name if you like contact somebody online or whatever and say, can I use you as a reference? Just somebody's name who lives here because sometimes they may ask, do you know anyone? And it, it'll help. But if you don't, as long as you have your accommodations, you're good to go. Exactly. Now the last thing I hear on my notes is say, please note, you already went over it. We'll just reiterate, reiterate it again. It says, please note, the culture sees Tanzanians to be generally soft-spoken, not brushed, kind, courteous, among other similar behavior patterns. Bear that in mind when moving about the city. And one had already expressed that earlier because we just tend to just want to rush. And I know I have to so cultivate to that fruit breath. of the spirit that's called patience and long suffering because they live by the true motto that they take quick, Akuna Matata. Don't worry. Like, Everything is going to be fine, and we lived in such a rushed society that we tend to worry and not realizing that the Father has it. And He gave us a command and told us, Do not worry, do I not feed the birds? So it teaches you to slow down, have patience, faith, and know that everything is going to work out. And it does. Mm -hmm. So I have slowed myself down a lot. I've learned to garner, because when you sit down, go to a restaurant, 
Y'all know how we get ready for our meal to come and be like, okay, listen, I'm finna sue this place. You know what I mean? <laughs> you know, like, we quit be like, we gonna sue, like, they ain't brought up on it. No. Like, we can wait as long as what? Like, 30 minutes, right? Because you gotta keep in mind that this is a sovereign country, so we can't demand anything. And that yeah. we are visitors. Exactly. So we have to have that attitude of humbleness. And even Patience. when things don't work out the way we want to, the way we handle it makes a difference. I know we're gonna get upset or, or angry, but just 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 keep it kind of relaxed and just think about what you're gonna say before you say it and just don't don't let your emotions get out of hand and then you say something. You know that you just yeah. right. that could escalate to something else, right. and we definitely they they have been so kind. As y'all already know, we mm -hmm. can only speak for America, right? Mm -hmm. It's tell the truth and shame the devil. In our country, we got people that get upset because they tell me the foreigners come here, they are taking our jobs, they go to Congress to change the laws, they build walls. <laughs> Over here, these people have greeted us with open arms. Mm -hmm. They have not went to the government saying that all these farmers coming over here, they think this and that. No, they know, they feel like we're a blessing to them, and we know that they're a blessing to us for them even having their doors open and welcome with all this stuff that's going on now, and you, everybody knows about that. Um, another question, yeah, do we wear a mask over here? No, it's optional. So if you want to, you can. If you don't, no, we don't have to. But it just makes sure that, you know, as you're moving about, you know, you, you care for your surroundings and you know somebody's hiccuping and sneezing or whatever. You do whatever you think is best for you and your health. But for the most part, we walk around here like it's back in 2018. Mm -hmm. It's 2018. the place to say, we live freely here. Yeah, we really do. <laughs> here. Another thing, too, I was thinking um, that might be kind of helpful is the fact that um, these Tanzanians or, the, or many of the continents of Africa seek us. They know we're Africans, but at the same time, we have an American passport, and then you have Tanzania, and they have a, a contract with America. So when we come in immigration, uh, please don't expect them not to do their job. Don't expect them to look at you and say, oh, you're black, then I'll throw away all the rules because you're black. They can't always go by the fact that we're black. Yes, we're African and we're from the continent, but at the same time, they have to do their job you know, with the agreement that they have, Tanzania and America. So a lot of times, if they question you, if you come in and you feel like, why are they questioning me because I'm African? Because they have to do their job. So it's not personal, it's just the fact that there's a, a we had talked to an immigration attorney one time, he explained it to us, I had, I kind of have a different perspective on that now, because at first I was, I was thinking, <laughs> I'm African, so why are you questioning me? You know, yeah, you know, one I'm sure after you know, I after he heard of this, he educated us, we realized, okay, so they have an agreement just like they have with the UK. We have to come in on a multi visa, the UK does not. They can come in, the people who carry the UK passport, they can just come in and get 90 days and pay fifty dollars. We have to come in on a multi visa and pay a hundred. So it's based on your country where you live. It's yeah. not the fact that you're black, because you got black people all over. Even the Netherlands, theirs is different. The Jamaicans don't need a visa to come here. So it does not matter that you're black. In fact, that what agreement did Tanzania make with that country? Yeah. So just keep that in mind. Nothing personal. So don't get upset with immigration. If they don't give you the things that you think you should get, sometimes you may not get 90 days when you come into the country. You may get 30, you may get 60. But you can always go back and ask for more time. It's just the way that you have to handle it. And carry yourself. Don't go in there expecting and demanding with some sort of arrogance, like mm -hmm. you're American and you're mm -hmm. better than or whatever. Because mm -hmm. they will humble you real quick and remind you where you are and who's really in control. I mean, because you know? they can deport you now. Yeah. So just keep that in mind. And we don't want that, none of us. None of us want to go back to Babylon. So let's just make sure we keep our attitudes right. Because yeah, we don't need that heat. We've been doing really good over here. Yes, right? yes, we try yes, to keep it like that. Yes. All right? So, so we want to be able to, to be open, to have their arms uh, open to us and welcome us in as we still come, as our people are coming. So we don't want to have anyone ruining for us. So right. just make sure you check your your attitude and at the door. Right. Right. Because we're, we're over here trying to create a pillow for you all. So when you're coming, 
when you land, it is just that much softer than it was for us when we landed. But speaking when you said Jamaica, that reminded me of my Jamaican friend that's trying to get over here. Listen, I'm just going to put a shout out. If we have anybody out there that's like travel agents that can help get this Jamaican flight from Jamaica to over here cheaper or whatever, please hit me up because we're trying to help this brother get over here, get his business started. The flights are really expensive. I don't know really any travel agents, but I'm just putting it out there. You guys, if you know anybody that can help him get uh, some Jamaican flight tickets from Jamaica over here at the cheapest rate, you know, just hit me up. But other than that, before we go, I just wanted you guys want to let them know she she has a YouTube channel too. I do. Yes, <laughs> we are. We are the YouTube YouTubers over here, and yes. we support everybody because there is enough love to go around. Want to tell me your YouTube channel? Okay, so I am Mana. You buy Bana <laughs> Yaunde B A N A Yaunde Bana Yaunde Daughter of Zion. That's on YouTube, and then my IG is. W H A N D one. So that's W as in whiskey, H A N D F O R D one. So Wanda W Hanford one is my IG. One, you gotta go back because I feel people paying over there. They really probably want to check you out on YouTube. <laughs> that was a bit much. Slow down. Okay. Give us a YouTube. Okay, so my slower. YouTube is Bana B A N A Bana Child Yaunde Judah. Child Judah, daughter of Zion, is my YouTube name. It's long. Banaya Unde, daughter of Zion. Okay, great. I'll drop it in the description box too for you guys that have attention. A D D E F G H I J K L M N P like me. <laughs> I can't remember all that stuff and I ain't got time to write it down. I'll drop it in the description box. She has a very beautiful YouTube family. I'm asking y'all to please go out and support. And also, if they got, they want to ask you any other further questions because I know you do other things, give them your email if you don't Okay, mind. my email address is Wanda J, J A Y, and um, 0110 at gmail.com. All right. And there you have it, family. We just wanted to stop in today, answer some of your questions that you know that you have family here that um, just willing to share as much as we can. But right now, I'm hungry, and I really want to go out with this chick here. <laughs> hey, we're going to eat some Tanzanian food. Sure enough. <laughs> Cheap chop. Girl, listen, y'all better come on and get some of this fun. If you know, not, if you know like I know. But other than that, Asante's son and family again for joining her, us here on Maya Speaks. Oh, and my email is Maya, M-A-Y-A-A, Speaks S P E A K S T Z T is in Tom Z is in Zebra at gmail.com. So check us out. All right, love you, family. Bye, Eddie. Bye. Bye. Bye.